What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's videos are pretty cool. We've got a lot of gear on the table right now. And of course, you can see this giant 4x5 camera, first and foremost. Today, we're actually talking about the Lomography Lomograph Lock uh, Instant Film Bag. It's a lot of words, I'm telling you, just as much gear. But this is it right here. This kind of big contraption basically is a fully automated instant film bag for the Instax wide film format. And it does exactly what you think it does. You take a photo, you press the button, and the film comes right out from this slot here. This thing's pretty cool because it's designed specifically to go on 4x5 cameras like the one you see right here. Um, if you ever shot 4x5, you'll realize very quickly that the process is basically the exact same. You know, involving things like a dark slide, as you see here. Dark slide, you pull that in and out. And yeah, it's the same order of operations. There is one extra bit of gear, which is this right here. And basically, this thing is a physical spacer. You put this where the ground glass goes, and it actually allows you to focus your image according to the distance required for the back here. All that means is that the place where the film typically is, the film plane on the typical camera, needs to be pushed back slightly in order to accommodate the design of this instant film back. And therefore, you put this in there, and then you focus. And that'll give you a very accurate, pinpoint, sharp uh, focal point with the new film plane. So that's about it. Before we go any further into kind of my thoughts about this product, let's go ahead and check out some footage here of my friend Albert creating a portrait of me using this instant film bag. Wow, that's fucking nuts, man. That looks amazing. That's Instax. You would never believe it. All right, so wasn't that portrait ridiculous? Albert made me look real cool. I think I'm cool, but in the portrait, I think it's one of the best portraits I've ever had taken of me. And it's all in part, obviously, to Albert, the photographer, but also what he could do with his 4x5 camera and then the Instax film. Um, and that wouldn't be possible, of course, without today's star, which is the Lomography Lomograph Lomograph Lomograph. It's a lot of L's. Uh, without the Lomo Graph Lock back, you can't do this, or at least not as easily. So honestly, I think what you saw there in that image is probably the biggest benefit of having this product. The instant uh, back ejector gives you the ability to create those beautiful 4x5 looking images with that striking bokeh that you get when you shoot wide open, especially on a longer 4x5 lens. You can do that on instant wide film. And it's amazing because you get instant gratification. That's the whole point of this. If you're impatient, if you like to see your images and you like to have fun and kind of just go with the flow, this product enables you to do that. Uh, four by five photography itself is amazing for other reasons. Of course, when you use real film, or not real film, but when you use the, you know, the high end four by five film, like the portrait, for example, you get so much detail, everything's tack sharp, you get incredible dynamic range, all of the above. And all of that is amazing, but this is not that at all. So if you're a four x five shooter who really cares about all those things like detail and you know having the most quality and dynamic range and all that, um, this product, you know, instant wide film by Fujifilm is not gonna give you that. And thus you probably don't need to invest in this because you're not gonna like it. Um, if you don't care about that and you just wanna have fun with your four x five camera like I do, this is amazing because it compels you to get out there and use it. Um, and there's a couple things that I think you might like but might not like about how to use it. You know, if you're gonna go out there and shoot landscapes, for example, with your 4x5 camera on instant film, I feel like it's probably not that worth it because the results that you get, although they're cool, given that you get your little instant print right away, um, you know, I feel like landscapes are the kind, the kind of thing that really lend themselves to detail and dynamic range, especially when you have the sky and all that. I just don't think it's gonna look that great. But if you're gonna shoot a lot of portraits, whether outside or in the studio or, or just of your friends, this is such a good package. In fact, I think that's what everybody should be doing with this because again, you get that four by five look that's so unique and you get it on instant film immediately without having to you know, buy all this expensive Portra, get it developed and then scan it and all that. You don't have to do anything. You get your image in the physical and you can look at it and think to yourself, damn, this is cool. So that's why I like this product and that's why I'm gonna keep using it. Um, but I recognize it's probably not for everyone. So how do you use this thing? It's actually you know, fairly straightforward. Um, it is a bit handsy and can be a bit frustrating, but the process is very analogous to 4x5. So this is how it goes. You have your camera, you know, you point it at something. The first thing you need to do is actually insert this where the film holders go. And this is the spacer. The reason you need to use this is that the film plane as it is right now for a typical 4x5 with the film holder is not the same film plane 
as when you add this, you know, the actual thing that holds your instant wide film. So with this spacer, it basically allows you to focus your image according to this spacer. And then that focus distance will translate perfectly onto this. If you were to focus your image without this, when you put this on the back of the camera, it's gonna be out of focus because the film plane here um, in the normal 4x5 way is not the same as the film plane when you're using the instant back. This is much thicker than this. Look at it, you see? This actually fits behind or in front of the ground glass if you pull the ground glass back and shove it in there. Uh, this does not. Don't try it because you're gonna break something. So ultimately, the process is like I said, put this in your camera, focus your image on the ground glass according to the spacer here, remove the spacer, then remove the entire ground glass off of your camera, and then just attach this. And then you pull out the dark slide. Remember, this has a dark slide, just like 4x5 photography. Pull out the dark slide, expose your image by triggering your lens, put the dark slide back in, and that's it. Image has been created. And then, of course, remove this from the camera, press the ejector button that you see right there, and out comes the picture. It sounds a bit complicated, I know, but if you shoot four by five, then this doesn't really you know, make that big a difference. It shouldn't be that complicated. I will say the way that I used it in the Feasting on Film 3 episode, which you can see in this link right here, uh, was not ideal, honestly. You know, I had all those you know, steps that I just told you in terms of the hands things you need to do to remove this and add that and blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, I was doing portraits on the fly outside in the street with strangers. So not only did they need to be patient with me, I needed to then, you know, get all this done. I also needed to meter, which is the most important step when shooting Instax wide. And, you know, and then I had to create the images. So if you watch that video, I'm a bit kind of, you know, nervous, not nervous. I was a bit anxious, a bit sloppy all over the place. That's because doing all these steps, plus talking to random strangers, plus metering for ISO 800 film in broad daylight, is not fun. And to make it even more challenging, I was using this, an ND filter, it was a three stop ND filter. I was holding it in front of the lens there in order to allow me to shoot wide open on this camera, or at least as wide open as possible. So it's not easy, it's a lot of work if you're doing it that way. If you're just taking photos of your friends or if you're in the studio, then it's a whole different beast. It should be much chiller. And that's what I plan on doing with this camera. Um, but it was a lot of fun. This is the thing, despite all that pressure, despite all that stress, I just had so much fun. And when the images come out, especially when they come out nice, this is amazing. Um, so yeah, I would recommend if you're considering getting this for the sake of fun and for the sake of, you know, kind of doing something a little bit different with 4x5, especially on this, then 100% get it. But if you care about those super pristine results that 4x5 typically gives you, um, maybe don't get this. I feel like it's just gonna sit around and you're not really gonna use it because you care about a particular image and this is not gonna give you that particular image. Um, but at the end of the day, the images you create on here are, are only as good as, you know, your camera and its lens, but more importantly, as Instax. If you meter properly, you should get pretty good usable images. But if your scene has a lot of dynamic range in it, no matter how you meter, something is not going to be ideal, whether it's your highlights or your shadows, because I don't know the technical details on this, but I bet you it's not, you know, the typical five, six stops of, of dynamic range. It's probably a little bit less than that. Um, but anyways, that's it. I would say, you know, go cop this if you're interested because I think you're gonna like it. All right, y'all, that's the video for today. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and like the video. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Feasting on Film 4 is coming out soon, and that's from my trip to Portugal. And I drink a whole lot of wine and I get drunk. The whole Feasting on Film series has been a lot of fun. You can check out the playlist right here, and I recommend you check it out. All right, y'all, that's the video. I'm out.